Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Afghan Cooks. I'm Miriam, I'm an Afghan, and I cook. You read a lot and you hear a lot about Afghanistan these days. When I was growing up, it wasn't like that. People would say, where are you from? And I would say, Afghanistan. And they would say, where in Afghanistan? Do you even know where Afghanistan is? Now, everyone knows where Afghanistan is. And when I tell them where I'm from, Kandahar, they have a certain viewpoint of what that means. But I wanna give you all a different perspective. I wanna take you inside and show you the Afghan culture. I wanna give you a different perspective. I want to give you my perspective as an Afghan. I want you to experience what we get to experience being Afghans. Not the war and the bombs and the poverty, but the culture and the music and the people and the food. Afghanistan is more than just kebab, okay? It's more than just its bread. It has a whole smorgasbord. It has a whole lot of different kinds of food. And I wanna share that with you. Today we're gonna to make something called shorwa. Now, shorwa literally is the word that we use in Pashto for soup. If you make this recipe and you run into an Afghan friend, you don't wanna say, I learned how to make shorwa soup, okay? Don't do that. Just say, I learned how to make shorwa and we won't be confused about what kind of soup it is. Every other soup describes what's in this soup. We have uh, the chark shorwa, which is chicken soup, right? It's still shorwa, but we tell you what's in it. Shorwa is just shorwa. What makes shorwa shorwa? Meat that is on the bone, okay? So any kind of meat that you have or that you can find, I'm using oxtail today because that's what I had at home. But you can use beef shank, lamb shank, anything that has bone and marrow and is very rich. You know, one thing is true and that's Afghanistan isn't a very wealthy country. A lot of the people are poor. So they make do with what they have and they don't waste anything. The other thing that's great about this and the reason why we know when you say shorwa is it has bread inside of it, okay? It's a bread soup. So, let's get started. First I have one large onion. And we're gonna chop the ends off because it makes it easier that way. And then we, my relatives, my grandmother, God rest her soul, and all of my aunts make fun of me because I use a cutting board. And Afghan women, don't need to use a cutting board. They just hold their onion or whatever it is they're cutting and they just, I don't do that. I have a cutting board. And we take, I'm gonna count this. How many cloves of garlic is that? One, two, three, four, five. It's five cloves of garlic and we don't have to really chop them up too finely. Just chop them a little bit roughly. You know, people think that Afghan food is spicy. Um, they go to these restaurants and, you know, they're always like, oh, your food is a little spicy. That is the diaspora going to places like Pakistan and India and adding those spices. Afghan food is flavorful, but it's not hot. So now we've got our garlic. Take a decent sized knob of ginger as well. I didn't peel it before, so I'm gonna do that now. And when we're ready for the ginger, we're gonna add it directly into the pot with a microplane. We have two carrots. Look at that carrot. It's like it has a little nose, like, hi. Do, 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 Mr. Carrot, Mr. Carrot. It's got a nose, look at him, hi. And these you just cut into chunks. Oh, I'm gonna cut into your nose. Sorry, Mr. Carrot. And then I have one, two, three, four potatoes. My family, especially my kids, they love potatoes. I add a lot of potatoes. A lot of recipes call for just two. And these are also cut into big pieces. If 
if you're feeling ambitious, you can peel them. <laughs> and there we have our potatoes. All of our vegetables are done. And so we're ready to start cooking. So we want to turn on our heat to about medium high. You want to don't don't put your hand all the way to the bottom of the pot to check that it's hot, okay? That's a very bad idea. Don't do that. And then you want to add your oil. This is about 4 tablespoons. And then add your onions. I don't think there's a single dish in Afghanistan that doesn't have onions. There are lots of dishes that don't have garlic or ginger, but every single dish has onions and turmeric. This is going to take a few minutes, so just be patient, talk to your friends, to your family, or don't if cooking is your private time like it is for me, usually when I'm not filming a video. I actually left Afghanistan when I was 18 months old, and I've only been back once. Um, I had my 7th uh, or 8th birthday there, um, but I feel like I can remember a lot of it and I, you know, you don't know from memories from your childhood if it's because people told you or you saw pictures, um, but I feel like, I mean, I remember some of the things. So you want, you want the onions to reach about this this color, okay? Not burned, but um, a little bit brown with a little bit of caramelization, okay, to get that sweetness. And then you want to add your garlic, turn your heat down a little bit, and then you want to grate your ginger directly into it. I want to talk to you a little bit about spices. I told you Afghan food isn't spicy, but if you want to in this recipe, you can add a little bit of chili powder. I'm not going to because we add our own later. We add some jalapenos and some chili peppers ourselves. My sister-in-law brought me this back from India and it's super handy. It's a spice bin and it has all of the spices that I use regularly right in here. Once the ginger and the onions and the garlic have a nice aroma to them, you can smell them, then you want to start adding your spices. And here what we're going to do is we're going to add a little salt. Now the Afghan kitchen is always a little bit of organized chaos. Don't worry, the recipe with, what's that word called? Measurements. Don't worry, the recipe with measurements will be in the blog, which is in the link down below. So if you click that, you'll get everything you need, okay? The important thing about salt though is you have to salt to taste. Now, what that means is that you want to add the salt, but you don't want to taste the salt, okay? The salt is supposed to bring out the flavors of everything else. You know, in French they have the word je ne sais quoi. Um, which means that certain something, we use the word namak, which is the word for salt, because salt gives everything a flavor. So, you know, without salt, your food is bleh, boring, bland. So when someone is beautiful, attractive, like you're just drawn to them, charismatic, we say that they have namak, they have salt. Black pepper. And then we're going to add some coriander. This is essential in Afghan cooking. Some cumin. And the ever important turmeric, okay? You cannot forget the turmeric. You want to mix that up so that it gets good and toasted just for about 30 seconds, okay? Then you add your meat, okay? And throw all of your meat in there. So you want to brown your meat. Nobody likes pale meat. Then what you want to do is 
you want to add your you want to add your carrots and your potatoes, okay? And you want to stir that around as well. There's some brown bits that get cooked up on the bottom of this, and so what you want is you want a little of that to go on the potato before you add your liquid. You want a little of that to go on the carrot. So, then you want to add your tomatoes. When it's tomato season, we will be adding fresh tomatoes. But it's okay, since it's not tomato season, to add canned, okay? Stir that up. I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit. And then what you wanna do is you're gonna add, this is four cups. You're gonna add four cups. And I'm gonna scrape the rest of this tomato sauce in there too. Like I said before, we don't like to waste anything. Okay, while we're waiting for this to boil, I'm gonna move this out of the way and just keep an eye on it over here. And I wanted to show you something. Um, this is a truck. Um, and these are the kind of trucks that actually carry goods in Afghanistan. So we call them jingle trucks. And as you can see, they're super elaborate. Um, I have a friend that was in the army and he went to Afghanistan and he brought me back two of these. Um, and these are really what they, what they look like. So in the back, it would be filled with um, watermelons and cantaloupes or whatever else, grains, people. So I just wanted to share that with you. So this pressure cooker doesn't whistle, it's not loud, it's very quiet as you can hear. It's come up to pressure. Now look, I know a lot of people are afraid of pressure cookers, but don't be. You can watch YouTube videos on how to use a pressure cooker. And honestly, I've only heard of like maybe one or two people who've been injured by a pressure cooker exploding. Just kidding. <laughs> Just get a pressure cooker, it's, it's great. Or get an Instant Pot. You don't wanna do this for like four hours. I'm gonna come back in 20, 25 minutes to check on it to just see how it's doing. So, friends, I have a confession to make. When you weren't looking, I actually put the pot on my stove back there, the induction stove, um, because that little thing was not powerful enough and it would have taken way too long. So I was gonna use the magic of YouTube and just kind of like bake you out. You deserve better. I had this on about medium, medium high for 30 to 35 minutes, okay? And what you're looking for is for your meat to be like this. You can see it's fork tender. It comes apart really easily, right? So that's what you're looking for. You don't want it necessarily falling off the bone, but you want to be able to take it off with a fork. Now the other thing you wanna do at this time is check for your namak, your salt. Be careful, it's hot. It definitely needs more salt. Now we're gonna add our kidney beans and our garbanzo beans. Also known as chickpeas. We call them nukhad. And on one of these episodes, we have a great recipe for uh, chickpea cookies. Gluten-free. I'm gonna go back to the stove, I don't wanna lie to you, and put it on just until the beans are warmed through about five minutes. Now that the beans are warmed through, we're ready to serve it. And what you'll need is a, a fairly large platter and some sort of device, either a slotted spoon or something like this. 
and you just put all of the goodness, the meat and the vegetables onto your platter. Some of my fondest memories in Afghanistan when I was really young are of um, mealtimes. And we would all sit on the floor, they'd put out a big tablecloth on the floor and everyone would sit around it and we ate from communal plates. So there would be big platters like this in the middle, you know, every couple of people would have their own and we would eat from it. So it was like family style on steroids. Here I have some cut up jalapenos and green onions and we're gonna sprinkle that on top. I cut the jalapenos fairly big so that if people don't like them, they can just pick them off. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our bread that we made fresh at home earlier today and we're gonna cut it. Now, the handy kitchen scissors are the best way to cut this bread. Afghan bread is really famous. Um, I think they call it Barbary bread in a lot of places. If you want the recipe, let me know. Say yes, I want the recipe for the bread in the comments. You could just subscribe and like too and leave it in the comments. And then you take your bread and you put it in the bowl. And then we just take the soup, the shorwa, and we pour it over. Make sure all of the bread is soaked in there. Now I'm going to add the rest of this bread. Take some of this parsley, you know, just to make it look fancy. Afghans are still stuck in the 80s where parsley is, you know, fashionable. Now comes the good part. We get to eat it! All of this work paid off. It's time to chow down. What's interesting, and I just want to point this out, that the word for soup is shorwa, and that's what we call this. And the word for bread is not naan in Pashto. That's not what we call it. We call it duri. When we tell you it's time to eat, we tell you it's time to come for duri. So it also means food. So we put the duri, which is food and bread, into the shorwa. And now we get to eat. So we serve this almost like two courses or two different plates. So from one recipe, you have an appetizer and a main course. Afghans are very resourceful. And then over here, I got two different kinds of serving utensils because I didn't know which one would work better. Better safe than sorry. The other thing about Afghan food and Afghans is that we eat with our hands and we use bread as our utensil or rice. I do like spicy food, so, and you can help yourself to any of the things that you like. Take more, take less. My kids don't like cooked carrots. More for me. Now let's taste it. Mmm. You know, it's not um, a light soup. You know, because it's a winter soup and it has all of that good, I think, you know, the hipsters call it the, it's bone broth, right? So bread just has soaked up the broth. It's good. You can see it just comes right off the bone. Make this. You will not be sorry. Thank you for joining us today at Afghan Cooks with the Afghan who cooks. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. If there are any suggestions you might have, please 
Let me know, okay? Give it a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification so it will come onto your homepage when you log into YouTube when we have a new video. Subscribe if you feel like it. Thanks, bye.